everybody, it's Simon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today we are on day 16. 16? 16. 16. We're going to be doing this really lovely bird in front of a sun. If you check the description below, there's a bunch of information with materials, uh, and there's also a very important link. That link will take you to the webpage where, if you'd like to see how to do this background, and how to grid something in, where the traceable is, where your references are, and your color exchange information is all there waiting for you for free. So if those are resources that you need, that's where they are. I'm kind of ready to jump on in, John. Me too. On the mic is my husband, John. He is going to be helping me do this lesson and bring this to you by tracking us with our cameras and running the operating system. So mm -hmm. woo that. All right, <laughs> let's hop on in. All right. Okay. Oh, thank you, babe. Ooh. All right, so I went ahead and I had gridded out this little bird. I've got a underpainting on here so that as we paint loosely on top, our white canvas doesn't show through. And so I think I'm ready to just start putting that out. Let's talk a little bit about our color. For this, I just have my Naples yellow, my Cad yellow median, my vermilion, my deep magenta, titanium white, Mars black. Ignore that green because I'm not going to use it. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Um, I may have to pull in some phthalo blue. We'll see as we go, but that's just in reserve if it comes up. I'm going to take a number eight. You have to excuse me today. A little, little rough day. Uh, number eight Cambridge so that I can paint this in. I'm going to get that wet. Get off the extra water and come over here to my paint palette. Now, the values on all of these colors are incredibly light. That was really interesting in the value study. It really was. And so the th main thing I'm going to be trying to do is make sure that as I'm making this, as I'm mixing this, that I do, once I get the colors I'm going to be using together, get that value up into a very light space. So I'm mixing my vermilion and my magenta together. And I'm going to be adding this to my Naples yellow. And that's going to start to give me that pink background color that we have going on in the sky. If you guys can see that, I may need a little more magenta. And you can come in to lighten it with some white. And as you can see, it gets you right there. We did some color studies uh, yesterday mm -hmm. just to make sure that these little variances would do well. You know, one of the things that I didn't really catch yesterday when you were doing the value study, hmm. but today really stands out, is we're looking at the shadow side of that little bird. Yes, we are, which I think is kind of wonderful because he has some really gorgeous colors in his shadow. I love you, babe. Thank you. Well, and in that explains why those tones were so even and flat across the colors. Because they're all they're they're all on the sh the, the shadow sides. So they're all going to be a little bit more muted. They're all going to be more even, and so it wasn't until that today I started looking at it again with fresh eyes that I saw, oh, no. that's why that value study had that weird kind of evenness to it that I didn't expect. Yeah, I think so. I'm adding a little of my cad yellow into it and some more white. I'm going to go ahead and brush this here. I'm also going to start to come up here with this color where I'm going to have my sort of like distant glowing sun. As you can see, just really simply put there. And there'll even be a light value inside of this beyond this. This is just the starting place for us to work from, which I think is super fun. I'm adding a little more magenta into that mix. And all of this really is about just finding the colors, these fabulously muted colors that we see in the back of the sky. So just trying to enjoy today's painting, if you guys know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion for some of our new viewers that have joined us today. If you joined, if you jump out to theartsherpa.com, there are probably links in the description down below. That'll there get you are there. links in the description down below. You'll see there's a video button a video tab in the, in the menu bar. If you click on it, then click in the search there, type in anything you want. Rainbows, <laughs> girls, eyes, lips, trees, all sorts of stuff. And you'll find a 
bunch, a bunch of videos that you can look through. There's about good 900. <laughs> about 900, yeah. So we've tried to cover as many topics as we can. I really try to provide as much free art education as I can to everybody out there and cover everybody's interests and just give as much as I can to everyone as often as I can. And more and more every day. And more and more every day. I, Doing my best. More and more awesome. every day. And so I'm taking my magenta and I'm bringing it over into this mix and I'm going to get my cad yellow medium into it and start to warm that up. And you can see that's going to bring it a little more into a peach so that when I add white to it, it takes it more into those colors. So that as we move back, we can kind of warm that space up a pitch. I'm going to lose some of my little puppies that I sketched in. I hope to keep them, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Sorry, babe. I just had to I have to explain the color mixes. I have to be careful not to be as chatty. In these no, episodes. sweetie. It's, I'm just off today. Well, you know, you're on day 16? 7? 16. <sighs> 16. Yes, yeah. it's the 16th of an epic journey. And, you know, like many people in an epic journey, you could use a little rest. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> well, it, each day it's, is its own day. And what will happen is you're doing a daily painting is your life will march on. Your life won't necessarily like step aside and go, oh, well, you're doing a daily painting. So everything has to be chill or everybody has to behave. None of that's not necessarily what's going to happen. And so you'll find yourself painting in different states of being, and that's really normal. Like you might go out and, and be in traffic and then have to paint. So what's wonderful about painting, when I'm always so grateful of, about painting, is no matter what's happening in your life, you can always get back into this to find your center. I'm coming back into that original color with the magenta, the vermilion, the Naples, I even kind of warmed it with a little of the cad yellow, and I'm getting back into the white just to get back into this little corner here, which I'm trying to warm up again. Ah. That's what's happening. I lost that warm. You know. I'm putting that little back, back bit in, but I want to get it back in because I really like this background quite a lot. Everyone's sending a lot of love and support to you. I appreciate that. And they're, you know, I know I'm looking forward to the upcoming Arts in the Park holiday <laughs> event for us, which is like our little mini vacay, but we get to go party with the community. Yes, exactly. Which is going to be pretty cool, I think. I think so. As I'm moving through this, I need to pull the back end because we're moving into kind of this crazy violet. And so how I got into that yesterday, because if you check the value study, we actually did some of these text test mixes just to see if we could get it. Mm hmm. And so what we found is it was a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue. And then we took a smidge of the magenta, which was like cooling it a bit. We want to take it. No, I'm sorry, warming it a bit more into that violet. And when we got it into that violet, then we could add white to it, quite a lot of white, and get that softer color. So I'm going to go right into my white and grab just a bit of this violet. And if you need more blue, you can always get more blue into it and just start coming back here and trying to talk about that violet space a bit. Now, you're using those harmonious color ranges? Right? Well, these are. These are some color harmonies. So I want to keep brushing this right here. I'm trying to, like, get a nice, like, loose blend around him. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting getting the transition from this space to that peach space, I think. But as you can see, we're pulling in more and more of this value coming behind are, Mr. Birdie Pants. Those are colors I would not have typically thought to, to be put able together to layer like that. Now, I'm going to take the color that I had between these, right? And I'm going to mix a half value so that as we're coming out here, there's a bit of a stepping it into that space. Yes, that sky's crazy how it goes from white to peach to purple. It really is. And this is a lesson for a lot of particularly challenging types of skies. I'm just very lightly dry brushing here. Because very often our favorite skies are the ones that make transitions through colors that are not going to easily transition like from blue to orange. Blue yeah. to orange is never going to easily transition. And so 
this practice here, which is a much easier transition than say a blue to orange, gives you a chance to see how finding those values and then mixing half steps helps you create another transition from one zone to another. And, and those, value studies were, those value studies were critical for you figuring out how to make these colors look cool. I do find for me that that is really important because sometimes the color in a painting is not intuitive. Again, I'm just dry brushing here. You see, I'm just letting a lot of the background show through that we've even already painted in. And now if you had followed along with some of that, it might make sense to you why we went the direction that we went, why we did what we did. That's really cool. So the, the journey of color this acrylic April probably has been one of my biggest ahas in the daily work, seeing how you've been able to apply harmonious color theory to get very strange color combinations that I would not normally see put together. But they're fun, right? They're amazing. They're actually all the things that I genuinely envy in really talented artists, you know, is that, that strong command of color understanding, composition, line, design, you know, this is definitely in that wheelhouse of, you know, you know. I'm sorry, I totally sorry. do know. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just trying to deepen this little corner down here to sort of reflect some of what, you know, we have on here and I can bring a smidge of it out. And so now he's kind of backed into a slightly darker corner, which is really lovely, isn't it? Yeah. This also was fantastic because it covers uh, some interesting things that are happening in the painting. So I'm gonna get back into this little kind of bluey purple here, you know? And you can come in and make just a few kind of little darker, Faded. See how I use the corner of my brush to create a soft transition? Mm -hmm. keeps, keeps the lines from getting obvious. That's one of the reasons why a good, scumbly, soft, scruffly brush can be super useful to you. Because it'll let you get some of those little far off fady bits. So you can just have a little of that essence there. And you want just a small amount of that essence every once in a while. Now the bird himself, I think he's just fabulous. And I do want to get to him, but while everything is sort of drying, I'm going to take my white with just a smidge of my cad yellow. Come in here and make sure that this is brightening up. That's nice when the paint is thick, isn't it? Okay. This is really <gasps> coming together. Just Yeah, I think so. Now, a little bit of the blue comes forward around the sun. If you guys can see that, I'm going to pull a little more into the pink because mm -hmm. I know where we're transitioning. It's interesting how it does that. It really is. And so I'm going to get a lot more of my white into this as we're transitioning forward. And just make sure that I come here and lightly kind of work some of that. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Around the space. So that that atmosphere of dawn, those sort of moody atmospheric dawns, which I've been trying to do on the channel for a long, long time. If you think you go all the way back to that big giant square canvas I did Misty Morning, what was I thinking there? Why oh, was that cave is so big? Oh my gosh. It would be fun. <laughs> I think that, maybe that's what I was thinking. It was not wise. But can you guys see how that, that then sort of creates that, that space and atmosphere out there and still gives us all those wonderful colors that we're enjoying so much. Now, I feel like for my branches, for my branches, I'm going to at first take a little bit of my black and my burnt sienna and I'll mix those together because they make a kind of nice little color. And I'm going to get some of them and add some blue to it, as you can see here, as you might. 
because there's a lot of little value changes that will be happening down there. And I'm going to start back here. And it comes, there's a little branch that comes from above his little tail. And I've got to bring this down. I don't have my grid anymore. I took <sighs> out my little lines. Do you need to grid up? Nah, I just do it. You're just, you're just going to wing it in there. I'm just going to wing it in there. You, you're pretty, you've done a couple branches. I've done a few branches, so I feel okay about it. I'm going to definitely improve the fluidity of my, my paint, though, because that will help how it comes off my brush. So just making sure that this is coming down here. And it just wanders right off that canvas. You can always come in and tone it with a little bit of brown. So it's not all the same value, but loosely. You know, you don't want to be too specific. And you don't need to be too specific. And then right here, you know, we know we're going to have a little bit of a little puffer, oh, as yeah, you get. The shadowy yes. spaces a little the well these are like a like a little seed pod i think and they're just sort of wonderful yeah so i just want to first capture their little shape i actually think that they were super charming really quite lovely so just capturing those is always great and then as you come down you know you take take them more into the brown so they really do kind of some interesting stuff. And I'm going to get my other big puffity brush into it. But I just want to get their little shapes in because they're crazy beans. So right now they look like crazy beans. They're just crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But they'll get better. They'll get better. I'm just using this brush because it's in my hand and I know the basic shapes that I'm going to be working out as I go. Maybe more brown as I come down. You know, little little one here. I'm with Miss April. I agree that this uh, little bird must be living next to a bird feeder. He's a little bird. He's he's well. That's what a good bird. Should, bird little should birds be, should be well fed. They they, sh they need the little extra layer to protect against the morning chill. Otherwise, it gets really upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> this kitty bird is not a happy bird. No, it would be a nice little fluffy bird. So I'm going to bring another little branch that sort of comes from this angle, and it's going to cross, if you check it out, like across here, and it even has a little bit of a stem bit that happens there. So, you know, just painting that. The trick with these branches is to have a brush that you have a reliable point on, to work on having light enough brush pressure that you don't over thicken the line. You really got to practice how hard you're pressing on the brush, the kinetic amount of motion that you have through that tool. And then, you know, I think this is a really interesting little kind of curled one. Oh, yeah. Making sure that you have enough fluidity to the paint. That's the water or medium that you're adding to the paint. Try this one here. A good fluff one. So water is okay to use as as with acrylic paint? Yes, water is okay to use. So here it... Because <laughs> I've read that you have to use mediums with acrylic paint. Some people who are, are purists about acrylic paint will, will try to make you feel like you've got to use mediums to paint with acrylic. But the honest truth is they were designed to be thinned with water. So now, it's okay. mediums are, if you're doing fine art, they are more archival, and the artists that are doing that for those reasons, I am certainly not arguing with. All I am suggesting is, is that, mm. <laughs> that it's made to be thinned with water. It, you can do generally up to 30 to 40% water when you're doing acrylic paint and be just fine. The thing that some artists are worried about that they're talking about when they talk about not using water is a condition called underbinding. But as long as you're not overly thinning what you're painting with, you really won't see no. any of that. I'm going to grab some of my yellow and a smidge of my brown, I think. Chat is going to rise up in anger at me if I don't tell you how pretty you are today. I and appreciate you that look chat. fantastic. And everybody in chat would like me to pass that along. And Thank say, you, chat. You look pretty stunning in your Thank pretty you. little necklace there. Thank you. You're, you're, you're feeling a little maybe today. <sighs> yeah, but again, 
if you're doing a daily painting, you can't be guaranteed uh, of always being in like a perfect state. Yeah. I'm going to come in and do his little beak real quick while I have my, my like little neat and tidy brush. Clearly, I'm feeling okay today because I've been getting a bunch of work done, which yeah. generally makes me feel really positive good about the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you chip away at that massive list of tasks. I'm using black and blue to do the beak so that I can get it into the gray. And I'm going to come in also while we're here and kind of put in his little fabulous, beautiful bead of an eye. Just because I love it. While I'm here, I'm going to grab some of my white. Don't be afraid to add a bunch more blue into it. And by the way, I appreciate all the work you're doing, babe. What do you mean? I just appreciate all the work you do. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate all the work you're doing. I'm going to just add a bit of a highlight. It'll make a big difference to the top of his beak. And then also with this blue and when I'm going to add just across the top of the eye, a little bit of a highlight. Sometimes when you have a brush, it's like just easy to come in at that moment before you get into your thicker brush and just go, you know what I'm doing today? I'm going to just use this small brush for a second while I'm getting things like tiny little legs in. Speaking of, let's put this tiny little leg in. Why is it you went with such a dark color to put the little branch and fuzzies in? Because the branch and fuzzies have a dark color. Because there's a lot of contrast on them. Yeah. That's why. That's their color. So, yes. And that, and that you, but you'll add more. Yeah, more you got to come this. back and add those glows and those highlights once you have their oh, base yeah. in. But you got to get there first. I'm going to bring my little, this is his little elbow coming down as his little leg comes forward. His little birdie leg, which I'm going to have to go like this to get a good handle on. And that's Trying okay. to have better body posture, this acrylic April. No. And then I can make his little puffy a bit bigger, which it would be. And we're going to talk a bit about his back claw. And then a bit about the front into that puffy now what you can do once you have all that in is come in again and grab just a little bit of you know your blue and your white on the tip of your brush is a good way to go and come to the front here and just very quickly give yourself some highlights so that his little leg has those little bits and that will help it feel like oh okay I really see that I grabbed some really light color here so it's the contrast of the light and the dark on his little leg that's going to make that really stand up and stand out as it can mm. now I really love the fuzzy personally I yeah, really do love no. the fuzzy glow so I'm going to come in with a little white and quite a lot of my yellow I may even warm that yellow with the smidgiest smidge of the vermilion that I have over here as you can see, just a bit, just a bit. And let's come to these different little puffs. And I'm going to come right here to the outside edge. And I'm going to add a little bit of that glow. Just where I can. This is going to be a little bit of a process, guys, but totally worth it. This is the part that a lot of folks are interested in. Interested in. Oh, because really? They tried the puffs on their own just to sort of like see how to, and there were some puff problems. Well, puffs can be problematic. <laughs> well, it's good that we're going to have some puff problem prototype shooting. I think so. Prototyping. Too many peas. Hmm. Oh, too much red I got. Just again, a little off my game. So sometimes that'll happen and you'll be like, oh, okay, I got to remix my, my red or I got to. Do this little bit here. And, and the trick will be to just capture these little bits. Like I'll get the little bit of the, the end here. I'm just coming wherever I see this. And then we'll have to come back and get another kind of lighter highlight. I'm going to add a little gold there. You're dry brushing there. I'm super duper dry brushing. Now, in I'm going to come here and just dry brush that side too. In general, your student paints require less water because they tend to be more fluid, right? Yeah. So if you're painting a more economic paint, you'll lose use less water than you would if you're painting a professional paint because the pro paint will be a lot thicker and more pigmented. 
and to once get that I once I get that done, I've got to pretty quickly come in and get my white in. I'm going to get my white so that's quite bright. You can even add a little of the yellow to that white. And I'm going to also pick up some highlights within the puff. You see that? Oh, yeah. As that golden lining. Yeah. Just to, just to show that some of the puff has caught that lining. And that will be uh, really important to how the glow on the puff like will translate. You don't want to put it everywhere. Notice I'm putting it some places, but not every place. Just enough to start talking about it. Now you're starting to see those little puffs, aren't you? Yeah. Little puffy puffs. So I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine blue and smidge of my white so we can kind of just still see that it's blue. And I'm going to come in here and also add a little bit of that to a few of the puffs. See how we're doing? On the inside. I do see it. Maybe a little bit right there. Going forward here. There's a smidge to it down here, but not as much. I'm going to really, 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 really dry out my brush because I don't want it to be wet. And I'm going to go ahead and get my black with just a tiny, tiny amount of brown. I mean, my brown with a tiny, tiny amount of black. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I'm get going it. to just fluffily paint these little fluffy puffs. And it's okay to let them be fluffy. Now we're letting them be fluffy. These are fluffy puffs. Make your puff a fluffy. I'm going to come to the front of this one where I put the blue and add the brown. And you can see I'm getting some shading going now in my puffs. Now, if you're taking it into detail, you can come do the little, the little hairs and dots. But I feel like we caught the gist and feeling of the puffs yeah. and which is what what I'm trying to do in my journey if you're trying to like take them there I would then go back through with my detail and do I'll just demo just real quick so you guys know you will just just so you guys know we always like that then you could come in add these what? little dots and, and a few of these little uh in shadow details what brush are you using there this is my number four round you'll want something that has a bit of a uh, sharp point to it. And you're going to want to make sure that your lines are not. Actually, this is kind of nice. I might actually do this now. I like it. You're, you found you found <laughs> the groove. Yeah, I just like it. So I like it too. <laughs> I just like it. It works for me. Now, one of the tricks is, is I'm not doing a radial. I'm not making a bicycle tire. If you'll notice that I'm coming out a bit. Because some of these little hairs don't show. You only catch a little of it here and there. And that will be an important trick if you're trying to demo that this is, you know, in that kind of lighting. Now, if you're trying to say, oh, this is, this is very well lit. Let me get some more of that. I may need some water. So I'm going to come there and say I swirl it around. And that's what improves my flow. What is? Adding a little water. Oh. Uh, yeah. flow, the flow of the paint off yeah. the brush. Yeah, if I was to do this like I was trying to be like, oh, I'm doing this for a fine art gallery and I need to be super archival, I could use like airbrush medium or um, a high flow medium. But that gets real pricey. And so I think that that's something you do situationally, but you shouldn't necessarily do for every single thing that you got going on. And I think sometimes... Um, you know, sometimes artists will come in and, 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 you know, they'll have adopted a practice for very good reasons, but they'll feel very strongly about it. And they may speak in a sort of authoritative tone saying you have to do it this way. But what they're really trying to say is that I prefer to do it this way. Or you have to do it this way to get their effect. Right. Their way. Their result. Their yeah. result. Their way. Because there are ways to get the same result in different processes. 
got to respect the artist's journey. You do. Okay. See, I'm putting this out there, and then that creates that little sense of space where I can be like, oh, this is like happening. So now we've got those, and they have some nice little loose bitty bits. While I'm here, I do the last little thing that I think I'm going to do with my detail brush, which is to come to the underside of the eye with some pure black. Come to the underside of the beak with some pure black. That's a nice detail, isn't it? Now, that bird's looking a little sketchy. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm going to come with just a point, just a small amount of white. Then I'm going to bring right here, coming forward, just a smidge. You really don't need that much. Back to my big brush, my number eight Cambridge. All right. We're going to see how we can do Rana's face. I may have to break down and go into the... Uh... You may de-sketchify him. Yeah, I'm going to definitely de-sketchify him. So I'm going to make a very deep orange at first. So this is a lot more vermilion. And I'm going to very carefully, super carefully come around his little eye that I worked very hard to put in. And that'll be like, you know, you have to know your tools know what you can get away with. I already like that orange on him so much. So, so, so much. He's starting to make me very happy. A little bit up the front. Now, it gets quite bright as it comes forward into the, to the sunlight. So, you've got a couple of things that are happening. The, the, the orange on him brightens, and then, of course, that outer edge will have some sunlight to it. So there's that whole like talk about the ever brightening and then coming right in maybe with some, I'm going to just wipe this off a little bit so I can demo this. Maybe some. Try that brush a little bit. Yeah. Maybe some, just some yellow, like right here. Ooh, that's a, that adds a lot. Yeah. That color just peeking around the, the sunlight hugging yeah. the little bird. And if I can, I'm going to just take the corner of my brush and very delicately try to add some yellow right here so that's nice so that kind of feels a little bit brighter and you know lovely now the color that was real interesting for me to find was his feather color and we talked about this again in the value study valuable studies are valuable <laughs> so what we did is we mixed our purple as one is wont to do and then shockingly what we found was that we needed to add the brown to it to get the color of his feathers and that's where we found that color. Grab a little bit of white and you'll start to see it happen. You know, there's a little thread going on here in chat that I think mm. you might be able to relate to. That it's oftentimes really hard to get started painting. Mm -hmm. But once you do, you get such an emotional clearing that you don't want to stop. It is completely true. And there are days that I totally depend on that. <laughs> The first time I ever uh, did a daily, you know, the first thing I noticed, which is probably what you guys all noticed, which is that, whoa, this is hard. <laughs> it, it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> and, is hard. And, you, and you kind of feel like, man, you know, I'm, I'm doing all my stuff here and it's really challenging and I, you know, and I'm not liking my paintings. And, but then as you go, you will start to feel this, this sense of, well-being that comes up i feel i'm going to come up here these are these are my little feathers on the wings and then the the, the tail gets a bit darker so i'm going to go into the little bloom and go into my tail there yeah, we've gone off there and you can even kind of come under the wing with a slightly darker value i'm going to brush some of this back in that's just my blue right there and i'm just brushing it in you know, using that lavender color and get some white into it. You can see it's quite light to really reveal it. You can come back here and maybe like underneath this, pop a little bit of that value. Definitely behind here, grab a little bit of that. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous color? It is. Twix agreed. Twix always agreed. 
that yeah. neighborhood cats yeah. must be dealt with. <laughs> she sees that bird and's like, that bird, it's got fierce. She would have whole moments with the bird, right? She'd be like, it's a fierce bird. There we go. Just putting a little bit of that blue down here can be really rather yeah. liberating, and you can have darker values of it. I'm going to pull some darker value in there. And then as I'm going, you know, I can just bring this here and make sure that he's got a nice tum-tum, as yeah. you do. Well, you want to make sure he's nice and fed. Fed. I like my birds fed. <laughs> That's like the birds. only way to be. I like my birds fed. And I'm going to bring this under here and back into him so you can kind of see how that works. And then I'm going to come back onto his upper body and the little wing, putting the darker value here at the base. And then, you know, I can reveal a lighter value as I come up. I'm really liking him today. He's turning out pretty sharp. Yeah, he's okay. I was worried when we first met him. Were you? He did. He was a, He looked maybe a little unsavory individual. He's not on Saver. He's a he's adorable. He was all shadowy and sketchy, but now we're starting to see the light in him. And if he got a little big and got away from me, <laughs> as he did, what I can do is I can take a little of my um, background value, which I did was the a lot of the magenta into that blue, and then some of the white. You know, and you can mix this. He's just ha happy how he looks. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm looking good. Yeah. Buffed his chest out. I'm to kind of take that and maybe start to trim that back up if you need to. Now I've just cleaned my brush, and I'm going to just take that little bit of pigment and blend it out a bit. But sometimes that's how I might prepare, like, I mean, I'm not really sure if it's going where I want it to go. And remember that he's got a bit of a darker belly right here. And his little self, he does have some little weird halo highlights that we might want to talk about as we're going. So besides this wonderful kind of crazy color in his feathers, let's make a pretty light version of that. And we can add a little blue to it, but we want to make a light version. It's like right here. And then a couple like little light marks right there. All right there. Couple last touches, and then I think we're good. We bird it up. But this, I think, will make a big difference. I'm gonna really dry my brush. I'm gonna load the tip. They were noticing you like to, you move around a lot when you're painting these little canvases. I do, I'm sorry, guys. No, it's okay. What's funny, though, is that it's partially, on a larger surface, you tend to move it around more, don't you? I do a little bit. I'm trying to catch his little fluffy feathers here at the base. And so that's what I'm catching is just a little bit of that light. that's kind of coming around him in a little halo. I didn't quite, I hit, this one needs to be more delicate. So how I'm going to get that is I'm going to go back into my little blue color that I had back there. And just trim, trim in. So only a small amount of that little white kind of peeks through. Because we only want a little of that white to peek. So a little white along here and a pop of white there. And I feel like we captured a, we, I'm going to do one little thing like with my, with my little brush here. I'm going to get my, maybe my blue and my black. I dig it. Oh, you're going to add some feather highlights. I just, some you know, I want to make sure that his little wing. This is so the bird watchers know that we're, Acknowledging that this bird has these particular features in case it was just, important to you. Just a little bit. It was just you know, bugging me. 
I get that because like for cars, it's like you're missing a fender right there. You got to put it in. So yeah. sometimes that's ha- that's happens. all it is. It's and that bird just needed a little bit of black tips on its feather. Apparently. So I'm Apparently gonna make a light. I'm gonna make a blue here with my white. I don't know if you can see it. I'm probably mixing off the palette right now. No, you're you're right a little bit. I can I'm gonna come it. down here to this lower corner. Oh, you're going down there. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a signing. Oh. There you go. Ooh, there he it is. Out nice. Ah, oh, the first picture that I had hoped to paint loosely, and here, there he is, and he's done. He's cute. He's just a fat little bird on a happy little branch with some backlit, gorgeous things. And I'm glad we went ahead and showed how to do those little airy fairy bits. So they could feel lit up if that was something you had wondered how to do. Go ahead and check out the end of this video to see what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye bye.